Hey everybody, this is Dave coming at you from Grand Blank. I figured I'd do a video today about my plant nursery stuff. I've been extremely busy and that's why I haven't really made a video. I've been trying to juggle between running my business, uh, framing my house. Um, I'll be putting up a video uh, with the progress of my house in the next couple days. But anyways, I just wanted to do a video in my nursery because this is the time of the year that you want to uh, winterize everything in and just whatever you haven't sold going into the next year you just want to make sure that your investment of working hard on these plants doesn't go to waste and that they survive till next spring but um, anyways we actually sold a decent amount this year but like I said I've been so busy building my house that I just figured there's a lot of plants I have that were slightly too small to sell for the price that I'd want to sell for which is between seven and fifteen dollars that I just decided this year what I did is I just pretty much maintained everything I had, made sure that everything stayed weeded, fertilized, potted, just watered, just taken care of. And um, I'm making this video, not necessarily maybe for new information, but just to show you guys where I've been and what I've been doing. Um, and just show you a couple updates of some of the plants I've shown you in the past. Like I have one video that I show like my Daisy Montauks that were small little cuttings. And here I'll show you a progress just in one year of where they've gotten and I usually like to sell these once like I said in one of my previous videos you want to whatever cuttings you make in order to really give a customer a good value for that price between seven and ten fifteen dollars is basically two years of growth so here's one year here's a good example and just by the way when I pulled that off of there I mean it, it's definitely root bound at the bottom now compared to what you saw last year where this is the one I pulled out of the sand and basically said I wanted to show you what the roots look like. I have cut this off the top of it about three months ago and you can see that when you cut it what happens is it'll multi flower but then it has all of these for next year all those nodes are ready believe it or not even though those look green and fresh except no, not that weed right there let me get that but on the actual plant itself here at the base all of those are pretty much ready to go even though it looks like there's leaves coming out that will sit there like that all winter and so technically with all these I'm actually gonna do an experiment with these because people love these they oh and then you have some of them that are actually already kind of growing out and I don't know what the plants gonna do with those I'm assuming they'll just all fall off if they're that already grown out like this one those leaves will fall off but it will be multi stemmed and this one will fill out I cut these off at the top to make them fill out like I said about two to three months ago probably about two months ago these ones over here I did not cut off at the top and they actually almost look like they're not as healthy they're just not as big I mean they're a healthy plant trust me they'll they'll grow next year really well but um, and sell really well but um, seems like the more you trim them the the better off they are another update is my burning bush uh, video I did I just yesterday up potted these from a smaller pot to a one gallon and they still don't look like much but they have a massive root system now next year in spring when this plant starts growing it will within a month or two be a sellable plant for seven to ten dollars even though it doesn't look that you can see that the calipers when they harden up that's about three-eighths caliper on that one and it's got a lot of uh, nodes for next spring ready to go I mean just that one you can see uh, poor quality on the iPhone but there's just tons of nodes that it's funny that plants the first year really don't you root them and then the next spring you, you 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 pot them they put on a decent amount of growth but not much but then the following year it's just unbelievable how big and full plants get now here's another thing some of my smoke bush that were small even though they're slow growing these ones are now about three years old next spring at least twenty five dollars a piece look at how nice this smoke bush is in a two gallon pot next spring probably put it in a three gallon or even just re repot this one in the same pot yeah these these things sell really fast um even though i was busy i i did i think i sold about 10 of these smoke bush i got what four left in the two gallons and then the previous year ones are over here this is probably just going to be another random thoughts uh nursery business what i'm planning on doing this uh we're what october 27th or 28th now I think by the about the middle of November I'm going to get a bunch of straw and me and the boys will just come through here and with the plants to overwinter them just to be safe most of these will survive just as is 
but you really want to make sure they survive because why do all this work and then you have 30% of your plants die when you know you'll probably still have about 5% die even when you winter them in it's just the way of life the, the weak seem to die and the strong plants survive and but anyways I'll show you the previous year of the smoke bush to show you um, looks like I have actually half and half you can tell that the whole weed thing I've completely failed this year it's just overwhelming and I think that's the hardest part people have to realize if they get into this business the more plants you create the more you have to take care of and if you get busy on other things you're in trouble um, but I'd say that my nursery is probably about 4,000 plants and you could easily do this part-time if it was all you were doing if you were coming out here and working on it for a couple hours a day but there's times where I can barely just rush out here once a once a week just to water them and when I'm watering them I'm not watering them as much as I should it's just because I'm trying to build a house but this is my true passion I love doing this I could see myself doing nursery business like this in my retired years and having kind of a small customer base and just for supplemental income but if you're a younger person and you love plants like I do there is a lot of money to be made in this stuff there's tons of it if you market it right and you just get the word out enough it, it, there's a lot of money involved in it but um right here so I got a couple more two gallon ones here and I bought these these are patented uh, maple trees called um, autumn blaze and the, I can legally sell these even though they're patented because I paid the patent when I bought these trees I think I bought the tree for a dollar and the patent was like a dollar fifty so I had to actually pay two dollars and fifty cents you're actually paying more for the patent on some of these but now that the fall is here, I mean, look at these red leaves compared to like a sugar maple. Don't get me wrong, those are beautiful too, but um, my sugar maple's alive and well, but it, it dropped its leaves already. These seem to be holding onto the leaves more, and it's just such a nice, like, pinkish red color. But, anyways, there's some more smoke bush, but then let me get back to what I was originally saying. Here's some smoke bush that will be like another year's growth before you would up pot them. Like next spring, you would up pot these into a two gallon. So they're. You know decent size but the other one's got about a, it's about double the size the calipers a little bit this little smoke bush as it is someone would gladly give you seven dollars for that plant but I find that sometimes see in the nursery business and I'm still struggling with it too what is the most efficient as far as my time versus how much money I get and if you can sell these for seven you can literally pot this up and it takes you about 30 seconds to throw some dirt and throw this in there and successfully pot it and put fertilizer on it. it takes you about 30 seconds to a minute to do it and then two more months later you can sell it for almost double the price but there is I know it sounds easy but when you grab all these put them on the wagon drag them out there by the time you have them all potted on average maybe I'm lying to you guys maybe it's more like maybe seven minutes of seven to ten minutes but a lot of people would definitely want to make seven or eight dollars more by putting in ten extra minutes but there is something to be said about selling them for a cheaper price when they're in smaller pots and there's a lot less work to do some of these plants when you plant them it's gonna be one of those things where I'm learning along too. where what is the best and efficient way to do this for example I've got the spirea here and I put them in these little four inch pots it's a lot less dirt and they take up a lot less space and see they grow fine in these little pots this pot is this plant is more than ready to be put into a one gallon now so then then the question is well maybe I should have just put it in a one gallon to begin with so then you don't have to do all of this but then when you do that you're taking up more dirt more time and more work because it is heavier it's taking up more space I think they do better in the winter when they're closer together like this once I, they're not going to sit up here on the bench they're going to be taken down on the ground and put straw around them but those are the types of questions that I don't even know if there's really a right answer to it it's just uh, all an individual basis like for instance um, some here's some spirea that are one year older than that look how nice they look even in the fall it's such a great color um, well, okay, here's my, I did, I, I guess I should show you my hydrangeas too because 
you're, you kind of saw them if you watch all my previous videos from day one when I first made those cuttings. Now you can see that a whole bunch of them are definitely a nice two gallon full, nice full plant. And then these are some of the ones that were, were the bigger of the ones where I put into two gallons last, or actually I think I did this this spring. And then over here, there's a few hundred of them that will pretty much be all this size next year. And I think this is the size that you kind of want to sell them. They're, they're still small, but they'll last. You can field plant them and people can still get good value. I'm thinking a fair price for a plant like, like an Arborvitae like that would be about 12 to $15. Sometimes you can get special buys. Like if you go to Walmart, you know, you can get taller ones for $12.98 or something, but who knows how they were grown. These were grown right here where most people will buy them and where they'll be planted. So they're pretty much grown right in the environment. So it, I think I could offer a better value, a better healthier shrub than a big store like Walmart. But I tell you, sometimes those big stores, they, they can very, be competitive even with uh, a small backyard grower like me because they just do it in mass quantity. But what that store doesn't have is when you really minus my time in this, I could sell this for a dollar fifty and still walk away with a profit. It's not worth my time, but you could lower the price substantially as a background grower and backyard grower. And besides the labor that I put in on my free time when I probably would be watching TV anyways, you can create all of these plants. Um, so um, there's a huge profit in it if you subtract your labor. But in a real business, if you ever did get bigger than a hobby, you want to add in your time and effort in your labor because that's part of the business. But when you get down to actually what it costs, besides the time, this plant, that pot cost me 20 cents and the dirt inside it, probably 10 to 15 cents. So, wow, there's not a tight profit margin. That's the good thing about it. And the good thing is they keep growing and growing. And the more they grow, as long as you're willing to put the work in to up pot it, the more they become, this is more money in them. Look at all these uh, Arctic blue dappled willows, just full shrubs now, and they're just little bitty cuttings. Um, one plant that's a hot seller that if you're going to get into this, Annabelle hydrangeas, the, you know, the small snowball bushes, great plant to grow. Um, and then, like I said, I did a lot of other cuttings and instead of when they root and then pop them up right away, I put these in, uh, let's see here. Um, here's some green velvet. This spring, June 21st, and so these these are long rooted. These, these have had roots on them since probably August of 2019. So now here we are, almost in November, and these would be good enough as they are to put into a pot. But now I'm finding that leave them in for one extra year until next spring. Pot it first thing in the spring, and it thrives. Then it has the whole year. I think it's actually healthier for these small cuttings that when they root, leave them alone for another full winter right where they sit. The roots will continue to slowly grow. And um, it's just, I feel like there's just, it's, there's more success in that. You're not taking up as much space. And then um, here's a good example of just being bored. And so I took plants that are really nice sellers. We've got some Wygela in here. Um, here's some more Annabelle's and I just up potted them into two gallons. I sell these for 12 to $15, so easy in the spring. You put an ad in there, you got tons of people showing up and they're gone within a day. So I figured, I guess another thing, when you're in the nursery business, you'll find out in your area what plants are in demand and which ones aren't. And believe it or not, some of the plants that are in really high demand are the easiest ones for you to propagate and grow. A good example is dappled willow. Dappled willow, they're just ridiculous. They grow so easy. People buy them up and they're ridiculous. The reason why I haven't trimmed any of these is as soon as these leaves fall off in the next few weeks and they go dormant, those are just all canes that I can re-stick as hardwood cuttings. And uh, since this is just a total rambling on video, I'll show you what I did and how easy it is with dappled willows in particular. Over here, 
And like I said, I was busy. I did nothing with these. So some of them have died, but it doesn't matter when you see how fast and easy. You can literally cut them as canes. One of my first videos, me and my daughter made a video where we're sticking them in sand. We don't even do the sand anymore. We just fill a pot up with the soil and just stick them right in the, in the pots. Look at these sat out here in the cold on the bench. I didn't water them. There's been times where I came here and they're just all dried out, almost dead. Barely have time to water them. And here's four one gallon pots. It takes you 10 seconds to throw all that soil in there. And you just take a handful of pencils cane. Like they're just, I don't even dip these in rooting hormone anymore. You just literally can cut them. You can do, you can do probably 200 cuttings in like 15 minutes just by sticking them in real quick. Some of them die, like here's one, you know. It's, uh, well, geez, it feels like it's rooted. Oh, wow, there it is. It is alive. So, maybe a lot more, that's, they're, look at that. Let me pull one out. I have so many of them, you'll see. They're just rooted, and it's amazing. And then you pot them up. And like I said, these rooted all, all summer. These have huge roots on them. And maybe in the winter, this winter, I'll just put them down, put some straw on them. Next spring, throw them in a pot. Let them grow for one more year, and then look at boom, four gallon pot. Make sure they're pruned nice. I'll prune this again next spring, eighteen to twenty-five dollars for that plant, just from these little cuttings. That the trick is, you're thinking in the future, two to three years ahead, and then you add, look at. I did this. It's a smoke bush that I'm proud of this one because I actually did this cutting myself. This is from two and a half years ago, and it's still so tiny. That's why I usually just buy these without even worrying about. I sometimes I try to do the cuttings just to say I did it, but you'll find that a lot of them, it's better just to buy them wholesale and then you already have them as cuttings and as uh, bare root trees. But anyways, I've uh, babbled on long enough. Maybe I'll do like a quicker little shorter video once we have this all winterized in. And any of the, you people that are disappointed that this is not a framing or construction video i promise you i'll have one done within the next two or three days okay this is dave and grand blank signing off